Good morning, and uh, thank you very much uh, for for attending uh, this uh, this presentation. I'm Sergi Tudela. I'm Director General for Fisheries and Maritime Affairs with the Government of uh, Catalonia. First, of course, I would like to thank the Paris Peace Forum for this uh, tremendous opportunity to reach out to such a distinguished and international audience. Actually, we feel very honored that our project was, was retained. Uh, uh, the topic of my presentation is going to be how the government of Catalonia has developed a unique model for participatory ocean governance based on the principle of co-management. So that is the devolution of decision-making uh, effective power to multi-stakeholder groups. So I will start with the, uh, I will start with the presentation now. Okay, just one, one moment. Okay, now it's okay, perfect. I think it's now it's perfect. So, uh, first of all, I would like to focus on a couple of uh, definitions because I will, I will, uh, I will devote a lot of time to talk about governance and co management. So, I think it's worth to stop a moment and to look at what these definitions really mean, right? So, governance. Uh, I really like this definition because it's really simple, right? Is governance is how society organizes itself to make decisions. So as you can as you can see, governance by itself is neither good or bad, right? It depend it, it will depend on the type of governance. So this takes us to the second definition, which is the definition for co-management, right? This is already something different, right? As you can see, co-management is a type of governance. It's a is is a is a model of governance option based on co-governing. As you can see, this is the official OECD uh, definition, very well known. It's a process of management in which governance, government shares power. This point is really essential. So this is about devolution of decision-making powers, right, to stakeholders. So as you can see, uh, co-management is much more than just providing advice. Uh, it's not about advisory committees. Uh, it's about uh, real uh, empowerment of actors in the decision-making process okay so now we can move already uh, on the on the okay let's look at the context at, at our geographic and physical context okay catalonia as probably you know is an autonomous territory in the northeastern corner of the iberian peninsula in the northwestern mediterranean we always like to say uh, to see the, the sea in front of, of Catalonia, which is called the, the Catalan or uh, Balearic Sea, as a sort of miniature model of the global sea nested in the northwestern Mediterranean. This is so because when we look into the physical features of the area, the topographic features, we can see attributes that are found uh, actually a little bit everywhere in the global ocean. We have continental shelf, we have uh, sophisticated oceanographic features like, for example, uh, cold water uh, cascading, frontal areas, upwellings. We have deep sea areas, canyons, very close to the to the coast. We have estuaries, we have semi-enclosed bays. And of course, all this di physical diversity at the same time translates into a high diversity of ecosystems and, of course, a high diversity of human users. So in this sense, this the fact that it's a miniature model of the global sea makes it an ideal laboratory for testing solutions that can be replicated abroad. So I just mentioned this high diversity in human uses. And here we are glad to present you. This is the, 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 the most recent issue of the EU Blue Economy Report, the, the, the issue of the current year. Here, uh, we contributed with two case studies about Catalonia. One of them uh, was the first evaluation ever done of the wave of blue economy in, uh, in Catalonia. Uh, if we look into these quantitative, uh, quantitative uh, figures, we can see, for example, that uh, blue economy sectors in Catalonia concentrate, channel more than 5% of total employment, and at the same time, 
uh, concentrates uh, almost 4% of the GVA, or the gross value added of the economy, which makes Catalonia comparing to the most dynamic and maritime-based economies in Europe, such as, for example, Portugal and uh, Estonia, right? So, okay, this is the context. So now uh, let me go back to the core of this presentation, which is our participatory uh, governance approach. So I will explain in the next slides how we have tailored uh, co-management uh, to different levels of complexity in oceans governance through three examples that showcase an increase in complexity of the systems co-manage. So we will see incremental complexity. So first, Let's focus on the less complex case, which is that of fisheries management. Here, we have only one sector, and uh, most of our fisheries in, in Catalonia are uh, local, so a limited geographical scope. Here, I would like to, to call your attention on the fact that two years ago, uh, we issued a decree on the governance model for professional fishing in Catalonia, which meant the first time in Europe that a administration, a, 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 a public administration, uh, regulated uh, and established a legal framework for fisheries co-management. So in Catalonia, at least, uh, co-management is no longer an informal arrangement among stakeholders, but now it's uh, embedded into our law, into our legislation, right? So uh, we understand that this is a, an, an interesting contribution to uh, fisheries governance or ocean governance, uh, not even Europe, but probably uh, at the global level. So what do we mean by, by fisheries co-management? Okay, our model is simple. Uh, well, it's very complex actually in practice, but conceptually is, is easy to understand. So our model is based on co-management committees, fisheries co-management committees, uh, made of the right stakeholder mix and operating at the scale that matters for the fishery. This is issue of the scale is very important because it means actually uh, an effective decentralization of fisheries management. Decisions are now taken locally by local actors. So you can see that uh, who is uh, who are those uh, stakeholders? So we have fishers, rep fishermen representatives, scientists, uh, of course, the administration is there as well, and NGOs. But the point is that administra the administration in that table is a peer, okay? So it's not above the other sectors. The, the, this is so because uh, all the four pillars, the four sectors are on equal footing uh, when it comes to decision making. Uh, so in this sense, we can say that Catalonia, and we are very proud of that, is the first place in Europe, or the, the only place in Europe where scientists, fishers, and NGOs do take real decision on fisheries on a daily basis. Okay. Okay. Uh, so far in the last couple in the last couple of years, we have already established six co-management uh, committees. I'm not going to enter into into details now. We don't have time for that. Uh, this uh, the only thing I would like to mention is that we are still exploring the potentiality of this new approach. For example, in one of our co-management committees, we have included um, recreational fishers along professional fishers. So they collaborate together, they work together, and this is quite unusual, right, in, in Europe. And also a, in another one, for example, we have adapted the co-management committee to the management of all fishing activities in a national park. So in this sense, we have integrated into the pillar of the administration, along with the, with the fisheries authority, also the authority of the park, right? So you see that there is a lot of flexibility. Uh, so far, uh, more than 10% of fish landings in Catalonia originate in fisheries that are co-managed, okay? Okay, so... So far, we have already some lessons learned, because even if formally we started recently uh, on fisheries co-management, we already uh, started in 2012 with some pilot cases. So we have already an extended experience. No? So according to our experience, the evolution of management powers to stakeholders makes management process more efficient, increases the corresponsibility and trust, and this is important, I will refer to this later, allows for adaptive management. This issue of adaptive management to us is absolutely crucial. Rules shouldn't be 
written in a stone, but uh, should be uh, that the whole process of decision making should be agile uh, because our reality is dynamic. Even the natural ecosystem is changing daily with the global change. OK, so we need to, 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 uh, to have a, an agile system. Uh, this devolution of powers triggers a more intelligent bioeconomic management of the fishery. What do we mean by that? Okay, uh, it's very graphic. Uh, here, our fishermen say that they lo no longer fish for fish. Now they fish for money, for euros. And this means uh, this is an interesting development because now they are less interested in putting a lot of pressure on the resource. They focus on the value of the fish, on the commercialization side, right? And then of course, it inaugurates a two-way dialogue, uh, scientists, fishers, that ensures the integration of traditional environmental knowledge from fishers into scientific research and into the provision of scientific advice. This is really important. So essentially, we can conclude that participatory management, empowering actors, results in better management. Uh, this is so because we are convinced that our model addresses the root cause responsible for, for past failure, which is no other than the progressive alienation of fishers from decision-making processes, which led to widespread lack of compliance. This is not just something that happened in Catalonia, but essentially in the whole of Europe, right? So this is reversing this uh, trend, okay? So, okay, just uh, give me one minute just to focus in probably the best known of our uh, Comanach uh, fisheries, that for the scent eel. Here, the, this case study has attracted a lot of uh, att international attention, many international delegations attending to visit the model. It has featured in media. On the left, you can see, for example, the situation of the fishery before co-management. We had landings of uh, 1,600 tons. Now, after, on the right, after co-management, only 400 tons. You might think, okay, this is this is not good news. Probably uh, the stock now is overexploited. And actually, the opposite is true. Our fishermen, uh, they have decided to reduce catches uh, so that the price could increase. And if you look at the total profit, no, the, the green uh, line, the total profit out of the fishery, it has more than doubled. This means that fishermen now, they have improved the quality of life, they earn more money, and they work less. Right, they are fishing every only every other week now. So they stay at home. They have a, a, a lot of uh, free time now. Okay, so um, okay, this model is uh, we have established a logo so that fish uh, sorry citizens can reward uh, good practices through their uh, informed choices. Um, and our model has been also uh, recognized internationally a couple of years ago by the FAO, by the General Fisheries Commission for the Mediterranean through the FAO. Um, and actually we have, because of our experience now, we have been integrated this year into the first FAO Global Expert Group on Fisheries Co-Management and are contributing to the first FAO Guidebook on the evaluation of efficiency of co-managed fisheries. Also, we have opened a new way Okay, but we are happy that we are no longer alone. Recently, and we are very happy for that, Portugal, a very important country, fishing country, formally adopted our approach to fisheries co-management committees in its new fisheries uh, legislation. We have heard that Croatia may soon follow. Also, uh, we believe that it's important to establish a network of best practices on co-management internationally to change experiences. So uh, actually we are working with the GFCM General Fisheries Commission of the Mediterranean for the Mediterranean of the FAO to organize to co-organize a symposium next year uh, in order to do so a fisheries co-management forum and here and I take advantage of this speech I would I think or we are convinced that it would be great to have support from the Paris Peace Forum uh, for this endeavor. Okay, so now uh, so far it was fisheries, but let's look at what would happen if we scale up this model from fisheries management, this participatory governance model, from uh, fisheries management to uh, maritime management. Uh, can we talk about maritime co-management? Okay, let's look at the second example here, this co-management group on the uses and activities in the maritime space of the Ampurda coast. Essentially, this is a co-management of maritime activities in the Costa Brava, in part of the Costa Brava. Here, the complexity is much higher. Uh, this 
uh, process started as a as a sort of uh, demand from local actors asking to regulate uh, maritime users. Uh, here we we have not just fishers but also all sort of recreational sectors divers recreational uh, fishers nautic uh, activities we have um, also uh, a lot of tourism uh, you can see 76 different actors we have spent two years organizing the governance of this process to make sure that the process would take off would work properly and now we have the reward. We have the first fruit on the table. We have the first action plan for 2020, 2021. Uh, for example, for the current year, we have more than 20 different actions with clear responsibles that are being implemented. So this is a unique example of a maritime co-management plan. Okay. And now we can even we can even further uh, scale up the process from fisheries, from maritime users, to the highest possible level of complexity, which would be the level of national policies. Here, the national maritime policy. Here, uh, I would like uh, to mention that uh, Catalonia adopted its first maritime strategy with a horizon at 2030 in May 2018. It was the first maritime strategy uh, in the Mediterranean region, fully aligned with the EU's maritime policy objectives. If you look into the vision, you can see, you can identify easily the three legs of sustainability. Catalonia fully develops the potential of the blue economy, of its maritime space, so uh, economic sustainability, guaranteeing social and territorial balance, so social sustainability, and of course, based on resilient, biodiverse, and fully functional ecosystems that generate the highest quality services for society, so ecosystem services, so environmental sustainability, okay? Our strategy is structured around four pillars, four scopes of action, as we call them. First one is about blue economy, Second one is about uh, the environment. Third one is very important for us. It's about citizens, improvement of citizens' quality of life. Here we include gender issues, culture, blue health. Uh, this is so because we believe that uh, the relationship of a society with the sea is much more relevant, goes much beyond just economy, of course. And the fourth pillar is exactly governance, the governance approach adapted to this level of uh, policy, maritime policy, okay? So uh, we are developing this strategy through uh, multi-annual plans. Currently, we are in the first uh, multi-annual multi plan for the period 2018-2021. It includes a total of 89 strategic courses of action, which have associated to them almost 300 specific actions. We have already completed and we are very happy for that. We are doing now assessing the midterm review of the first four year plan. And we have already completed 60% of all uh, scheduled actions for the four year period. Okay, so let me go back to the issue of governance. Which, which is the governance that we apply, the participatory governance we apply to this very complex uh, approach or, or, or system. Okay, here we have uh, developed the Catalan Maritime Co-Management Council, which is a very high level structure with representation from all actors. We have four commissions under the Catalan Co-Management Council. We have Blue Economy representative. We have the second commission on bioeconomy, circular economy and sustainability. Third one on integrated maritime policy and fourth one on research and education. And the good thing is that these stakeholders themselves will decide on the shape of the maritime strategy for the next four years, because next year they will be mandated to develop the second four-year strategic plan of the strategy. Okay, so, okay, uh, at the end, we always say that it's all about common sense. Eh? I mean, all this might seem, might seem very complex, eh? and actually sometimes it is, but it's uh, essentially about applying common sense and consensus. We think there is no alternative to good governance other than participatory mechanisms and devolving uh, real power to stakeholders, empowering stakeholders. Um, okay, I'm just finalizing the, the pitch in order to allow for some time for, for questions. 
Uh, I would like to, to, to state that uh, the, the maritime the maritime strategy uh, and our kind of degree on fisheries co-management are both uh, available in English and can be uh, not available on request. The strategy actually can be downloaded from the from the website. Okay, and also to mention that both the Catalan fisheries co-management model, the fisheries model, and the maritime strategy of Catalonia 2030 are the two voluntary commitments that our government has submitted to the United Nations Oceans Conference. So details on both are also available on the United Nations website. So I thank you for your attention. And uh, we can now take some some questions in the event that uh, that there are some of them. Okay. Okay. Let me check at questions. Okay. Here there is a very uh, interesting question about the acceptance from stakeholders. Eh? Uh, there is a question that says, "Okay, uh, this co-governance approach seems to have bore fruit." But how did you entice different stakeholders to collaborate initially? They must have been skeptics, okay? And maybe prior tensions between them might have uh, made it difficult, okay? Okay, uh, I, what I have to say is that in our case, we were surprised. We were surprised by the fact that uh, in some of these cases, in many of those cases, essentially, the, the, the stakeholders already had some relations between them. Uh, I have to say also that we are in Europe, and here we are lucky that we have, uh, we develop or we implement the, uh, the European Structural Maritime Structural Funds, the EMFF, the European Maritime uh, and Fisheries Fund, through, uh, uh, at territorial level, through uh, FLACs, Fisheries Local Action Groups. Fisheries Local Action Group means that local stakeholders, not just fishermen, but all stakeholders around blue economy are already used to collaborate, uh, preparing projects, etc. So probably this paved the way to some extent for that. In other cases, for example, I have to say that I was really astonished uh, when I was told that uh, professional fishermen, for example, in one of those co-management committees I mentioned, readily accepted the, 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 the fact that our, uh, uh, recreational fishermen could also make part of the co-management committee. Uh, well, in our experience, at least, I have to say that uh, that was not a problem. That, that, on the contrary, that there was really traction among stakeholders to, to, to collaborate together, okay? Okay, here um, there is another interesting question about whether or not we are planning to extend co-governance approach to other policy areas bef beyond maritime issues. Okay, here the question is yes, uh, I'm Director General for Fisheries and Maritime Affairs, so uh, my, my, my area of work is, is, the, is, is the ocean, but uh, of course my ministry, my ministry is the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, Forestry uh, and Fisheries. So. Uh, my minister uh, is really uh, is really determined to extend this co-governance approach, as she calls the approach, to the other sectors. So yes, I think that uh, the fact that it's it's been a big success in 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 in, in, in the sea triggers uh, an, an interesting interest from uh, from from stakeholders to try something similar in other areas of course the realities are always are always different okay so far i cannot see more i cannot see more questions we still have five minutes so i'm sorry if i ran uh, very fast i just wanted to make sure that hey i had the time to to cover everything so Okay, there is another question popping up here. So do you think this co-governance approach could apply to global international issues? What lessons would you share from your experience? Okay, uh, actually I, I'm convinced, I'm convinced that uh, as we said, right, that uh, the risk of not accounting, of not taking into account in the decision-making processes, the stakeholders, okay, 
uh, is that or any decisions that could result from uh, from policy processes might result in uh, paper legislation, something just paper, and no real effect in the water or whatever uh, it applies. Right. So of course the complexity is higher. Uh, I, I was clear when I said that of course fisheries is easier. Is one with all its complexity is easier because it's just one sector, right? Uh, then I mentioned when we moved into the maritime co-management of Costa Brava, here we have 76 actors. So it took us two years before starting working. Actually, our 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 uh, constituency were a little bit concerned because they thought that, okay, I mean, they have, I mean, these guys from the administration, they have already forgotten of, of us. They said, yes, and, and now two years afterwards, no? Because it was for us, it was very important not to end up with paper legislation. We wanted really the commitment and and the commitment of stakeholders. So, of course, as we said, we we have managed to 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 scale this this process up to the level of our policy, our maritime policy, for international issues. Uh, probably, uh, we can have, and this is already happening in other in other areas, no, where we have a more formal heads of state of uh, administra administrations, you know, forum made of administration in a parallel forum of a stakeholder. The good thing is that this parallel forum of a stakeholder is not going uh, completely separated, right? It's to establish a good bridge in terms of governance so that what comes out from this parallel forum really fits on the decisions that will be adopted at the political forum. I think that this is something that probably can be can be can be worked out. Okay. Okay, just waiting a few minutes. How do you hope this edition of the Paris Peace Forum will support the work of your project? This is a good question. Actually, we have requested for support. I mentioned that it's important that this, uh, this uh, model uh, spreads out. And it's important also on a two way, even for from a selfish point of view from ourselves, because we need to learn from others as well. I mean, of course, we, we believe we can help others. But we can, we have to learn from others as well. And uh, in this sense, I think it's very important uh, to establish uh, this uh, exchange of good practices between administrations, between NGOs, between practitioners of uh, maritime uh, co-management, co right, at different levels. Uh, I mentioned the fact that uh, when it comes to fisheries, we would like to establish this year this uh, co-management forum in order to bring together uh, practitioners from different case studies. And here we see uh, a, very, a very practical role that the Paris Peace Forum could play in, in supporting this process, okay? And also sometimes it's important to reach other administrations, right? Because uh, this idea that uh, of devolving power uh, I know that there is some reluctance sometimes from administration. So it's important that from another to learn from another administration that is happy about the outcome, right? And that we can demonstrate that we are not just actually as an administration, we are not losing power. Actually, we are doing our homework uh, much better. Okay. And here the Paris Peace Forum is uh, ideally positioned uh, for that. Okay, there is one minute left. So we will wait if there is a very last question popping up. Otherwise, let me, because the system will automatically shut down, shut down. So let me thank you again for your patience, for your interest. And please don't hesitate to reach out uh, to us uh, anytime. Uh, we will be happy, of course, to, to follow up with you.